Welcome everyone. In this video I'll be providing you with some of my insights into the murders of two British backpackers, namely Hannah Withridge and David Miller, on the Thai island of Koh Tao back on the 15th of September 2014. Now th these insights actually uh, were recorded in an article that I wrote back on the 7th of February 2016 and uh, that article was published uh, in a change.org petition and I'll give you a link to that below and it was also published by a, a freelance journalist by the name of Andrew Drummond on his website and he published that also on the 10th of February 2016 and I'll provide a link below and uh, space permitting I will also reproduce the entire article and much of this information of course uh, you will not find uh, within the mainstream media so here we go Many Western tourists are drawn to Thailand by glossy brochures and travel documentaries featuring pristine beaches, sensational diving and the friendliness of the locals. Indeed, Thailand is often described as, quote, the land of smiles, unquote. Everything is so cheap in the land of smiles. Food is cheap, alcohol is cheap, accommodation is cheap, travel is cheap. Unfortunately, life is cheap too. Truth is so terribly cheap that it often appears to have no value whatsoever. One thing that does have value is, quote, face, end quote. And saving face of a powerful Thai person can, can, can come at a very high price for people on the lower rungs of an extremely class-conscious society. The Burmese are often, the Burmese are even more vulnerable uh, than the Thai, as the Thais look down on them, as the old invaders who sacked Thai cities and dragged off the surviving inhabitants as slaves. It was into this land of sly, slay, into this land of smiles, into this land of illusions, that two young British backpackers ventured. Their names were David Miller and Hannah Witheridge. Subsequently, on the morning of the 15th of September 2014, their battered bodies were found by a beach cleaner. Fast forward to Christmas Eve of 2015, and in the, the Samui Provincial Court, two young Burmese workers, Zhu Lin and Wai Pyo, were duly convicted of the murders of both Britons and the rape of Hannah. Wai Pyo was also convicted of stealing David's mobile phone. Both defendants were sentenced to death. By the way, those sentences have now been commuted to life in prison. I'll continue. Michael Miller's address to the press shortly afterwards uh, at the court entrance and flanked by his parents Sue and Ian Miller, uh, David's brother Michael read a prepared statement to members of the press. The Miller family clearly approved of the guilty verdicts. Michael Miller's short address was punctuated by the howls of the condemned men's mothers coming from inside the building. In a very uncomfortable scene, the distraught Burmese mothers exited the court building just as Michael was winding up his address. Michael Miller has since been on the receiving end of some harsh and frankly unjustified criticism for that address. The opinions that Michael expressed were, in fact, perfectly reasonable and logical within the context of the evidence the Miller family heard in court and in the context of the evidence they did not hear. The opinions were also reasonable in the context of assumptions that the Miller family might have and on inferences that they may have drawn. Very few people will know who killed David and Hannah. I was not there so I do not know who the true killers are. I cannot be 100% sure that Zhuo Lin and Wai Pyo were not responsible but I respectfully disagree with the opinions expressed by Michael Miller. To understand the fiasco, it helps to know a little about Thailand and its police force. The police are allegedly notoriously corrupt and they, also, uh, they are also not particularly bright. Just a few short days ago, the Royal Thai Police raided an innocent gathering of 30 elderly bridge players in the Sin City of Pattaya on suspicions of gambling. Ironically, vice and crime are everywhere in Pattaya. Only a few hundred metres away, the local jet ski scammers were hard at work fleecing tourists under the protection of the local police. 
and I say see for example and I provide two links in the article which I'll reproduce below. In recent years there have been major uh, revelations to the extent of slavery and human trafficking allegedly involving the Royal Thai Police and senior Thai military officers including an Army Lieutenant General. According to the helpful if imperfect global slavery index there are an estimated 475,300 slaves in Thailand as of 2014. Excuse me. In the late 1970s, there were uh, regular credible reports of Thai pirates attacking Vietnamese refugees who were fleeing their homeland at the end of the Vietnam War. Many of these pirates were fishermen who took advantage of some great opportunities. The reality is that there are a lot of very dangerous people in Thailand who do not feature in the glossy tourist brochures. On Koh Tao, the police decided to charge two small Burmese men, relative puppy dogs, who were in the general vicinity of the crime scene at about the time the murders were committed. However, there were hundreds of people on Koh Tao who could have been at the, tr at the crime scene at that time and some of them were wolves by, in comparison to Zolin and Wai Pyo. Psychologists say that ordinary law-abiding people do not suddenly commit the type of crimes for which the defendants were convicted. Psychologists explain that there is a progression from other violent crimes and or crimes of a sexual nature. I do not know the defendants, but I understand that there is no known history of them committing any violent crimes or sex crimes. They were simply focused on working and sending money home to their parents. Now, I've, I have since spoken to a psychologist who has uh, told me that there are uh, some instances where an ordinary law-abiding person will suddenly uh, commit a, um, a terrible crime like murder. Um, however, the, the general pattern seems to be that there is a progression. And I'll continue. There has been extensive discussion elsewhere on the bungled police investigation, which won't be repeated here, except to say that one should be extremely sceptical about anything a Thai police officer might say about the case. Michael Miller did refer to the Thai lawyers who defended Zor Lin and Wai Pyo. It would be a little naive to assume that these volunteer lawyers were properly prepared for the trial. One should not assume that the unofficial spokesman for the nebulous, quote, defence team, that's a, a term that was often used within the um, mainstream media and a lot of those journalists did not actually define what they meant by defence team, it was all very vague. But uh, the spokesman for the uh, nebulous defence team, Mr Andy Hall, has any special skills that could assist other than being fluent in spoken uh, Thai and Burmese. In fact, I think that he's fluent in uh, uh, spoken and written Thai, but he's not particularly fluent in Burmese. I have known Andy Hall since September 2014 and have attended three Thai courts with him in Prakanong, Nakhon Patom and Phuket. He says that he is not a lawyer, but according to his website, he has a law degree with first class honours from the University College London. My own observations are that he has little knowledge of the law of evidence and defamation, a poor memory, neglects to communicate properly and lacks attention to detail, although he is rid ridiculously br uh, brave in risking jail over his defence of some vexation, criminal defamation and Com Computer Crimes Act charges. Now, to be fair on Andy Hall, I did make some investigations um, about the University College London, and in fact I found out that one can obtain a law degree there in just three years and not four, which is the standard time in Australia, for example, and uh, the subject of evidence is not a compulsory subject. But in any event, that sort of highlights that um, if he's someone who's not studied evidence, he's not going to be a lot of help for the Thai defence team. Although, again, to be fair on Andy Hall, he did have the good sense to request a an international expert in DNA evidence uh, in the form of Jane Torpen. And that's something which the defence lawyers had not done. And uh, when it comes to attention to detail, he may have a great attention to detail in the things that he's interested in, but there were important things in this case that he did not seem to be particularly interested in. And I'll continue. Based on my discussions with people, including Jane Torpen, that's the 
international DNA expert that I mentioned before, uh, including Jane Torpen and a retired Australian barrister. That retired Australian barrister, unfortunately, was a man by the name of Robert Holmes, who wound up stealing 5,000 Australian dollars that had been uh, earmarked for the defence of the uh, two Burmese fellows. And um, Robert Holmes, three decades ago, had actually been convicted of uh, stealing something of the order of half a million to a million dollars from a series of banks in Australia. And he'd been convicted uh, for that and spent time in jail. Although, unfortunately, he's still on the role of the High Court of Australia. But that's uh, a bit of a diversion. I shall continue. So based on my discussions with people, including Jane Torpid and uh, a retired Australian barrister who were attempting to advise the defence team, the defence lawyers appeared unprepared and appeared to have a poor knowledge of DNA evidence. Unfortunately, they have also decided to ignore much of the advice given to them by the uh, retired Australian barrister, who is Robert Holmes, who was familiar with DNA and who was experienced in running criminal trials. Now, in fact, I think he had limited experience because I think he practiced for a year or less in total before fleeing Australia. The defence lawyers also squandered resources in the form of international DNA expert Jane Torpen, who had flown from Melbourne to Koh Tao for the trial. Jane had made requests to Andy Hall for various documents explaining that she needed to examine and consider those before leaving in Australia. She received nothing. In late July 2015, Andy contacted me asking me to put him in touch with Australian experts who know about DNA and one of the machines that the Thai police had uh, said they used to analyse samples. I put him in touch with an acting inspector of the Western Australian Police Force. Subsequently, on the 28th of July 2015, Andy was also informed by the Melbourne human rights lawyer Julian Burnside AOQC that Jane Torpen would be a good person to contact. Upon Andy's request, I contacted Jane's agency, which is called Experts Direct, uh, the same day in order to create a contact between Jane Torpen and the defence team. At this late stage, the prosecution had already presented a great deal of its evidence. Andy has told me that he had previously been in contact with a British DNA expert. As it transpired, though, the defence team did not use the services of the British DNA expert. I do not know the reason or reasons. The defence team was always facing an alleged problem of limited disclosure by the prosecution, but the defence team really needed to be better prepared on the science of DNA many months prior uh, to July 2015. In fact, um, you know, good barristers, good trial lawyers will tell you that one wins or loses cases based on preparation. And in fact, uh, I recall listening to a British SAS soldier um, coming up with a, a pithy little saying which was, proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. And unfortunately, the Thai defence lawyers were not properly prepared. In September 2015, Jane Torpen flew into Koh Samui without the benefit of receiving any documents and met with the Thai defence team. She expressed differences of opinion to those of the prosecution experts, uh, but she also expressed doubts upon some of the opinions expressed by the Thai expert, Dr. Porntip. Ultimately, the defence team made a big mistake in deciding not to call Jane to give evidence. It is true that Jane had very few documents to analyse, but she could certainly have given evidence in the witness box to the effect that the Thai police laboratories did not comply with international standards in this case and that no reasonable conclusions could be drawn from the scant documents presented by the prosecutor. And one has to recall or be mindful of the fact that the burden of proof proof is on the prosecution and the documents that they produced to the court or the document um, actually didn't prove anything. I'll continue. Jane could have given evidence that generally only five microliters of mixed DNA would be required for the relevant test. One teaspoon, one teaspoon of original mixed DNA sample would be enough for 1,000 tests. Jane could have given evidence that pursuant to international standards laboratories retain original mixed samples in order that they may be 
they may retest a, a sample themselves and in order that any future defense team has an opportunity to retest an original mixed sample. The prosecution and uh, police merely had amplified DNA evidence available, but without the original samples one could never be sure of the source. However, given the Given that the defence team did not call Jane Torpen, it is open to draw the inference that her evidence would not have helped the two defendants. That inference is reasonable for an outside observer, but the reality is that the defence team made a mistake and that Jane's evidence might have been enough to secure an acquittal. It certainly would have made an appeal much easier, as there would be more material for defence lawyers to work with. As it transpired, the defence team wasted Jane's time and wasted an opportunity to present some compelling evidence before the court. Jane had been flown to Samui with funds from generous donors across the world that had been raised for the defendant's defence. In fact, one of the people who'd raised a lot of that, uh, those funds uh, was a fellow by the name of Chris Harkins, who had um, created the change.org uh, petition uh, uh, in, on which uh, this article was published. Uh, and other people who assisted, of course, were people like Sue Buchanan, who was the editor of the uh, Samui Times, and there are just too many other people to mention. I'll continue. Jane told me afterwards that she felt drained for a month after returning from Koh Samui. Andy Hall requested an expert, uh, requested an expert on the Rohingya to travel to Koh Samui for the trial. The idea was that this witness was to give evidence to the, on the ethnic conflicts between the Rohingya, uh, such as the pancake or roti seller who acted as a police interpreter, and the ethnic Burmans, such as the defendants. When the Rohingya expert met with the defence team, she was told that, uh, rep that the representative from the Burn Burmese government vetoed the idea of her giving evidence as the Burmese government did not recognise the existence of Rohingya. In the circumstances, her time and effort was wasted. In fact, uh, in Burma they're just referred to as um, Bengali rather than Rohingya. And I'll continue. There are several examples of a lack of communication and coordination that plagued the defence team and wasted resources of volunteers and donors. In fact, after the verdict, Andy Hall obtained the assistance of a Perth barrister, Mark Trowell QC, but neglected to inform him that the defence team had already been in contact with Jane Torpen. As a result, Mark Trowell commenced obtaining opinions from a second Australian DNA expert and learned later from uh, the retired Australian barrister of Jane's involvement. I submit that Michael Miller's statement is logical and reasonable but only if based in part on assumptions that the Thai police are honest and competent and that the Thai defence lawyers were prepared, and upon the inference that Jane Torpen could not help the defendants. Once those assumptions and that inference are removed, the statement ceases to appear so logical uh, or reasonable. The decisions of the Samui Provincial Court um, it's a heading. I respect the decision of the court, but with the greatest respect, I disagree with some of the important findings. Having said that, I also wish to point out that many Western courts make mistakes with forensic evidence. No one uh, should be under any illusion that judges in the UK, the USA or Australia are immune from being blinded by science. Indeed, Mark Trowell QC refers to, um, on his Facebook page to an article, quote, FBI admits flaws in hair analysis over decades, end quote, by Spencer S. Sue in the Washington Post on the 18th of April 2015, and I provide a, a link for that. I continue. In Australia, there is the infamous case of Lindy Chamberlain, uh, bracket, Dingo at Ayers Rock case, close bracket, who had been convicted on the strength of dubious forensic evidence that was later discredited but only after she'd spent considerable time in jail. In my opinion, the defence team did enough to win, but it should not uh, be at all surprised that they lost. Going to court is like going to the casino. Many things are unpredictable. Luck and chance play a huge role. 
It was vital that the defence team increased its odds and put its strongest uh, possible defence, which involved calling Jane Twelpen. According to the great Yarmouth Mercury, Andy Hall said that the defence team was totally uh, taken totally surprised by the verdicts, and I've got a link to that. The retired Australian barrister, this is Robert Holmes, who had been trying to advise the defence team, was not at all surprised, even though uh, he too disagreed with the verdicts. In my opinion, and with the greatest respect to the court, the so-called DNA evidence should have been ruled as inadmissible. The police and prosecutor had none of the alleged original uh, mixed DNA samples that they said were recovered from Hannah's body. In the circumstances, all the, quote, results, end quote, flowing from such samples could not be verified or tested by the defence team. It matters not that the prosecutor says that he had amplified DNA, as one cannot be sure of the original source. It would be easy for the police to simply compare the DNA taken from cheap from cheek swabs uh, of the defendants, then compare it with uh, other amplified DNA that was sourced from the cheek swabs taken from the defendants. That will ensure a match, but it won't be a match of the defendants to an original mixed semen sample. If similar DNA evidence had been presented in the UK, Canada, uh, the USA or Australia, it would have been promptly ruled as inadmissible and for very good reason. Without the so-called DNA evidence, the prosecution case collapses. Yes, there is circumstantial evidence that the defendants were in the vicinity of the crime scene, but so were hundreds of other people. The only thing that is suspicious is uh, that YPO agrees that he picked up a mobile phone, although there is a plausible explanation. Hearsay evidence was presented suggesting that the police had a phone uh, and that uh, this was David's, but I'm not even sure that the police, uh, that the phone the police referred to was the same phone that uh, YPO said he recovered from the beach. The appeal papers will scrutinise the decision in uh, great detail, but one other important observation is that the evidence of uh, the defence witness uh, being uh, Warawi Weawut, MD, might have been misconstru misconstrued at uh, page 38 of the judgment. It is said that Warawi testified that the police laboratory operated in keeping with international standards. In fact, he was silent on the question of whether the police laboratory operated in keeping with international standards in this case. With respect, the court's uh, conclusion was not supported by Warawi's evidence. And then uh, in the last couple of paragraphs, I talk about the appeal. And in fact, there were uh, two appeals and the defendants lost both of them. But since then, their uh, death sentences have been commuted to uh, life sentences. And that is the end of the article, which I will uh, try to reproduce in full, uh, space permitting in the description below. If you found that article at all useful, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, think about uh, pressing the subscribe button and certainly uh, you're welcome to leave any constructive comments uh, below as well. That's the sort of thing which really helps out the algorithm. And um, I will be uh, posting other articles about uh, Jane Twalpin and the DNA evidence uh, in the near future. And there are uh, other articles. I've got over 70 videos on this mm -hmm. channel and some of those other ones uh, touch on the DNA evidence as well. So uh, feel free to, to binge watch some of those. And in the meantime, keep safe.